Ladies and gentlemen, Warren Buffett is worth over $100 billion, and he became a millionaire by the age of 30. And just four years before that, he had a net worth of only $26,000. In today's age, we would need to earn $10 million to achieve the same level of wealth that Warren had when he was 30, but that's exactly why we're here. Warren Buffett's journey to his first million is a masterclass in business, investing, and leveraging opportunities. Today, we're looking at exactly how it happened so that we can learn from the principles to shape our own success. Starting with a lesson about the first element, luck. Now, before Warren was even born, his father, Howard Buffett, was setting the foundation for success. Howard, over his career, was a businessman, stockbroker, and Republican politician. He was an advocate for free market capitalism and also, interestingly, a Wall Street skeptic. Howard was known for his honesty, humility, and frugality, and he instilled that in Warren from an early age, shaping his philosophy towards money, investment, and life. Now, Warren would often visit his father's office, which was conveniently located in their home. This exposure to his father's conversations about business, stocks, and the financial climate was undoubtedly the kickoff of Warren's early interest in the financial world. Warren himself said, I was lucky. I had the right heroes. Tell me who your heroes are, and I'll tell you how you'll turn out to be. This early influence from his father played a significant role in the development of Warren's investment style, helping him to navigate his way to the top of the financial world. Voiced by Warren himself, this is a lesson about the first vehicle of his success, luck. We can't choose what family we're born into, we can only make the best of our situations. And fortunately for Warren, that meant having a father that would introduce him into business and finance basically from birth. And that's exactly what happened. They say the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single stick of gum. Or at least that's how it went for Warren Buffett. Buffett would stroll down the sidewalks of his neighborhood, pockets full of gum and a determined look on his face. While other six-year-olds are off playing catch or pretending to be cowboys, Buffett was getting his first taste of capitalism, one stick of gum at a time. No fancy business plan, no corner lemonade stand, just a boy, a little bit of charm, and packs of gum. Warren would go door to door, attempting to sell one stick of gum at a time. Not packs, but individual sticks so that he could make more profit per stick that he sold. Then he expanded his product line to include something a little fizzier. Coca-Cola. He'd buy six packs for a quarter and then sell each bottle for a nickel, making a 20% profit on each pack of pop. Now, as a first grader, Buffett was learning a mantra that would echo throughout his career. Buy low, sell high. He didn't know it then, but this is his first taste of what would become a billion dollar understanding of business. Now, regardless of who your father is, it takes an odd six-year-old to go out and attempt to sell sweets to the whole neighborhood. This was Warren's first taste of entrepreneurship and more importantly, the vehicle of business. The scale of this business venture aside, experience is experience, and this taught him that he was able to sell something and sell it for a profit at the age of six. He was rewarded for his entrepreneurship, something that many people are burned by. That's much sooner than a lot of people get experience, and it marks the beginnings of his 24-year journey to a million dollars. In 1941, Warren Buffett was just 11 years old and ready to dip his toes into the financial world. With $114 in his pocket, he purchased three shares of Citi's Service Preferred, an oil service company, at $38 a share. The shares swiftly took a nosedive to $27, an almost 30% fall that would shake out most new investors. But Buffett demonstrating his already instinctive patience held his diamond hand tightly. He didn't sell. When the stock rebounded to $40, he saw an opportunity to exit and he sold his shares making a very small profit. But as fate would have it, the stock's value didn't stop there and it catapulted to over $200. This first exposure to the stock market was also likely facilitated by his father, but regardless, it taught him valuable lessons about patience and when events do and don't go according to plan. This experience also serves as the third vehicle to Warren's first million, investing, the third of the three vehicles that propelled Warren's success. A couple years later at age 13, even as an entrepreneur at heart, Buffett took a paper route, delivering the Washington Post door to door. The paper route was more than just a job to him. It showed him a regular income stream, offering a practical lesson in the power of consistent cash flow. The job demanded punctuality, reliability, and customer service, qualities essential for any successful entrepreneur. It honed his discipline and time management skills while adding a steady flow of income to his savings. 
Again, as an entrepreneur, he was building a financial runway one paper at a time. Likely a product of his environment, he was driven in a very unique way. Between his hustles and job at the Washington Post, Buffett was able to save up around $2,000 by the age of 15. He wasn't just dreaming big, he was investing big too. He saw potential in a 40-acre farm from Nebraska. This was serious real estate, and he dropped $1,200 of his savings to make the purchase. Today, that same purchase would be equivalent to $20,000. The farm was not for farming, it was an investment, and Warren had a farmer tenant and a profit sharing agreement. This purchase marked as his first taste into the real estate market and combined two of his money-making vehicles, business and investing. Warren wrote, I am a better investor because I am a businessman and a better businessman because I am an investor. Now, a year later in 1946, at just 16 years old, he made his debut into the entertainment business. Along with a friend, he invested $25 into a used pinball machine. Rather than setting it up in the basement for their own amusement, they had a business-oriented plan. They placed the pinball machine in a local barbershop. It was a win-win because the customers could play while they waited their turn, and every coin dropped in the machine added to Buffett's cash flow. This business was also a success. They quickly reinvested the earnings into more machines, placing them into other barbershops. This business venture didn't just turn a profit, it also turned into a lesson about business scaling and became a stepping stone on his path to his first million shaping his understanding of reinvestment and the sweet power of passive income. When Buffett was 17, he hit another milestone, high school graduation. But unlike most high schoolers, he wasn't just leaving with a diploma, but a savings account with $5,000. Today, that would be like a 17-year-old with $69,000. Right after high school, he packed up with his small fortune and went off to Wharton School of Business in Pennsylvania. But he got bored there after a couple years and transferred to the University of Nebraska and finished his degree in one year. This wasn't enough for Buffett, and at 21, he aimed for the coveted schools of Harvard Business School and got rejected. But in true Buffett fashion, he viewed this not as a setback, but as an undercover opportunity. This led him to enroll in Columbia Business School, where he encountered his greatest influence, the father of value investing, Benjamin Graham also the author of the admittedly boring book, The Intelligent Investor. Now, Graham became not only a mentor to Buffett, but also a significant influence on his investment philosophy. The teachings of Graham focused on value investing, resonating with Buffett, and laying the groundwork for the billions he was about to make. A story of apparent failure and rejection leading to even better opportunity this period was a critical chapter in Buffett's journey to his first million. There's a ton of lessons here about adaptability and persistence. Having a door slammed shut in your face to an opportunity that seems like the best option might just be opening a different, better door. Columbia is still an Ivy League school, and Buffett is definitely an intelligent individual, but looking at the framework for how he approached his decisions and turned his situation into a positive one is an inspiring story. Now, during his time at Columbia, Buffett decided to step foot into a new business, owning a gas station. His investment in a Sinclair gas station seemed promising at first. Cars were becoming increasingly popular, as was the need for gas. But a more popular station situated across the street from the one that Warren bought ate away at Buffett's customer base. Despite the planning and effort he had put in beforehand, he wasn't able to turn a profit. The most important thing to do if you find yourself in a hole is to stop digging. Now, this is a lesson for Buffett as well as for us that not every investment guarantees a return, reinforcing the importance of research and wise decision making. But nevertheless, this was just another stepping stone on his journey to his first million, and this continues to echo Warren's impressive patience and persistence. Now, after the gas station and Columbia University, Warren returned home to Omaha at the age of 24 and started working for his father's brokerage firm, Buffett, Falk & Company. This move for Buffett meant more exposure to the world of stocks and investments and allowed him to learn firsthand about managing and valuating companies, which would be essential for his later success. Over the next couple years, Buffett would fine tune his investment strategy, furthering his knowledge and expertise, before eventually starting his own investment firm, Buffett Partnership LTD. With a bold vision and hard earned wisdom of past failures and successes, he made the difficult decision to start his own investment firm. The partnership started small with seven limited partners made up of family and friends, contributing a total of $105,000, while Buffett himself added only $100. 
The vision was clear, to create his own investment strategy that incorporated teachings from the legendary Benjamin Graham coupled with his own philosophies. This allowed Buffett to truly leverage his skill of spotting business potential and marked as one of the most pivotal points in his journey. Managing the investments with a keen eye, Buffett demonstrated time and time again his financial resourcefulness, steadily growing the firm's assets. In the same year that Buffett started his partnership, he also acquired a company by the name of Dempster Mill, a windmill manufacturing company. Warren saw potential in the decaying company, despite of the odds being stacked against it. He took control of the struggling business, believing that he could turn it around for the better. The company ended up being a nightmare and took a considerable amount of time for Warren until about seven years later where he was able to sell the business for a healthy profit. It's impressive to see that even with the headache of Dempster Mill, it didn't stop Warren from taking his next calculated risk of buying yet another struggling company, Berkshire Hathaway. Its stock was undervalued, a classic characteristic of what B. Graham taught as a cigar butt investment a discarded company with a few good puffs left in it. Buffett saw potential where others didn't. The textile company was on the brink of ruin, but it was still bringing in cash, and Buffett believed that he could leverage that. He began to buy up the company's stock, accumulating a substantial stake over time. Now, at the time, it became one of Buffett's self-admitted biggest mistakes. The purchase was by no means a get-rich-quick, as Berkshire Hathaway's textile operations, producing cotton and wool clothing, never turned into the gold mine that Buffett hoped. Investing in Berkshire Hathaway didn't bring Buffett his first million, but it was a step in his journey. The textile firm turned multinational conglomerate holding company later would bring in billions of dollars, but like most of his investments, not right away. Again, echoing one of the most important lessons that we can learn from Warren Buffett, Patience. Between the numerous businesses and investments that we've looked at and many that we didn't have time to talk about, one actually contributed to his millionaire milestone the most. In 1960, Buffett Partnership LTD, that held true to its investing principles, buying undervalued stable companies with the intent to hold, finally pushed Buffett's wealth into the seven-figure mark. Through the years of entrepreneurial ventures, intelligent stock picks, and savvy business investments, at the age of 30, he hit a net worth of $1 million that today would be like earning 10 times that. He hadn't just reached this inevitable milestone through lucky breaks, but rather through a series of calculated decisions. His journey from selling gum to becoming a millionaire hadn't been a straightforward sprint, but instead an uphill marathon marked by calculated risks. The partnership wasn't how he made billions, but it's how he got his first million. And the principles he used to acquire and grow that company are the same principles he used to make billions. He had the foresight to say no to countless opportunities, but the wisdom to say yes to calculated risk. He got lucky by having a successful, business-savvy father who taught him the ropes at a young age, but he also made himself lucky. He constructed his life and education to grow the opportunities around him, staying consistent by investing in businesses. His journey was marked by the relentless pursuit of his goals, a testament to his timeless advice. It's far better to buy a wonderful company at a fair price than a fair company at a wonderful price. Patience, luck, and diligence, plus the right money vehicles, took Warren from selling gum and making pennies to making billions of dollars in business. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, 